everybody welcome back to the channel today's down and dirty we're gonna start getting into a little more advanced dozer technique so my first video was really kind of giving you a walk around of a dozer getting you some basic concepts when you start to doze but today I wanted to talk a little more about production dozing uh, and some of the more advanced techniques you're gonna use and we're in Michigan in the fall so we're really in some ideal conditions today it's just sloppy nasty mud uh, we got snow yesterday which immediately melted and has turned this entire site into a giant sloppy mess which I guess kind of plays into this video I don't know so anyway let's talk about some of those ad advanced dozing techniques so the first thing I want to talk about is when you're doing good straight pushes with a dozer uh, what every rookie wants to do um, is let me see we're already in rapid mode okay what every rookie wants to do is bury that blade from the get-go and as soon as you start slipping you start doing this we're just really working that blade and the second we slip we're working that blade and then you lift up and oh we gotta lift up a little more but we're gonna keep it really heavy and you can see I'm not being productive at all if these were dry conditions and I wasn't slipping all over because of the mud you could see how I'm not actually getting anywhere I'm just putting a lot of strain on the machine and so when you spend the majority of your time spinning your tracks like crazy and then you're dropping and all you're doing is putting a tremendous amount of train, uh, strain on your track chain, you're putting a lot of strain on your final drives and your sprockets, but look at what we did. We didn't do anything. We didn't accomplish anything with that push. If you want to use a dozer to its max potential, and I do wish, <laughs> I tried recording this video last week when I was in Ohio, but my, my external camera died, so unfortunately I didn't get to record this in nice, clean, dry conditions. But you can imagine if we were in dry conditions, like that would be putting a tremendous amount of strain on our machine. Luckily for us today, we're in really sloppy conditions, so it's really not as hard on the machine. But we still, in a production push, you're just burning fuel if you're trying to, if you're spinning your tracks we want to be productive and so the way we do this is we put that blade down and we start to load our blade up and right as we really and notice my engine is not much above idle right now but now i'm going to slowly let off the decelerator pedal and as soon as i start to spin i'm going to ease back on the blade notice i'm not really raising that blade up a tremendous amount i'm just getting it past the point that we're spinning and this does a couple things for us. First of all, it keeps us pushing. And look at how much material we're able to get. That's a lot of material we're still able to push. And yes, because of the slick conditions, we're getting a fair amount of track spin. But at the same time, we were able to carry a lot more material because we're not hammering up and down with our controls. Let's look at what happens real quick here. We're gonna hammer up and down with our controls like a rookie would here. Oh my gosh, look at, we're just, we're just the biggest, baddest dozer operator there is. You know, oh, we gotta lift up, oh, we gotta get down, okay. So let's look at what we've done here. What have we actually accomplished? So if you look at the grade out in front of the machine, you're gonna notice there are a lot of hoopties. This does two things that really make our job more difficult. The first thing is, how are we supposed to make a grade out of that? Like it's gonna take me probably two or three passes to really shave that down because this is really sticky clay. It's gonna take me two or three passes to shave that down to where I actually have a nice finish grade. That's number one. Number two, if you think about it, when we make a trough, so we've dipped down with our blade and then we've lifted it back up, we've made a big trough. Well, how, you know, that's probably a foot that your tracks are going to bridge and you're not actually getting traction with that area. And so when you create all of these hoopties, not only do you create these big troughs where your tracks aren't coming into contact, the other thing that you're doing is your tracks are going to break the high points of that trough off. Let's go this way. Let's say our, do our dozer is moving in this direction. So we've got, a, we've got a peak, we've got a peak, and then we've got a trough. What's gonna happen is our tracks are going to grab onto this peak here and drag it backwards into this trough. So we're losing traction, it's causing more track spin because we have all of these troughs and valleys, we can't get really good traction. So the next time we try to do a nice proper push here, we're just not getting any traction, we're getting excessive track spin because we haven't left a nice finish. Versus if we go back to my method here, to where we're just barely easing up on the blade when we get that track spin, and we're gonna carry a nice even grade, 
now we keep those tracks in full contact with the ground and look at how much more productive I could be. Just a little up on the blade, not a lot. And then we're going to slowly ease down with our pressure to keep pressure and keep the machine right on the verge of spinning the tracks. That's the key to production dozing is you want to keep the machine right on the verge of spinning tracks. And no, you know, obviously nobody's perfect. You're going to still get a little bit of track spin. But if you keep the dozer right at the verge of spinning the tracks, you're, mo you're, you're maxing out the productivity, the productivity. I'm sorry, I can't talk today, guys. You're maximizing the productivity of the machine without causing excess track wear, without putting a lot of strain on the sprockets and the track chain, and you're not just burning fuel. And let's look at my grade that I just left. Notice the difference between the push I just made and that first push where I was really working. That's a very easy finish grade right there. And it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to really make that shine. Now, let's talk about the use of this hand right here. Every rookie operator, whether it's finish or production, makes little adjustments and you're gonna notice everyone's hands are super busy with really jerky movements versus a really good production operator that's good, you know, and this really crosses over into finish dozing, you're gonna notice this hand is making a lot of little adjustments, but look at the smoothness of the adjustments we're making. Instead of it being this jerky jump, 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 where your grade is constantly stepping up or down, instead we can really get to where we can use nice smooth movements on that blade. That's going to allow you to carry some really good transitions. That does a couple things for us there. First of all, if this is a finish pass, I don't have to backblade it. I don't have to do anything to make that finish pass look nice. Instead, it's a finish pass. And I've talked about it in my vlog a couple times. Uh, after you spend a fair amount of time in a dozer, it actually gets to where it's easier to push forward and make a nice pass than it is to back drag it and make it look nice. I know that makes no sense as a new operator, but trust me, you do cross a threshold in your career to where it actually is easier to make nice finish passes going forward and back dragging becomes a pain. So getting where to this hand, and obviously you're gonna have some jerkiness to this hand because with any machine, you can see I go forward, 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 and I finally get to the point where the valve actually starts to respond to my input. Likewise, when we push, when we pull back here, I pull back, 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 and right there the valve starts to respond. So you'll notice there is gonna be a little bit of jerkiness as I get to that point. But let me go back and make another pass here so you guys can see. Once I get to the point where the valve is responding, I'm gonna be making nice, smooth inputs, and I'm gonna be holding that position over a duration because I'm actually slowly making adjustments with the blade. And what that allows me to do is put a really, really nice finish on this because I'm not stepping up the blade. I'm just nice, smooth transitions. And so, sure enough, if we back up here, Obviously we have clay that we're fighting, which is never gonna clean, clean, shave, shave clean, that's what I'm trying to say. But you can still see that's a really, really smooth pass. That's a finish pass. Unless, you know, especially if we've got a, a skid steer or something that's gonna follow me back dragging or we've got a Harley rake, I don't need to go touch that again. That's a finish pass. So that's another thing is getting really smooth. Stop thinking about it as little bump adjustments with this hand and start thinking about it as making nice, smooth transitions up and down with the blade and even side to side and with your angles. We're gonna make nice, smooth transitions. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this takes time. The dozer is one of the most difficult machines on the job site to run, especially when you start getting to this level where you're starting to work on finish passes this is a hard machine. It takes a tremendous amount of seat time to really, you know, it's it's one thing to talk about this in theory, but when you're actually doing it in practice, this just takes a tremendous amount of time. The last point I wanna cover while we're on this job because it is so unique is as you can see, we're dealing with clay and clay tends to chunk out. So we're gonna make one more pass here and then I get to fix my grade for Rick. I'm screwing up his finish grade, but I had permission. hog material in clay. As soon as I bury that blade, clay is going to start chunking. It does not give you a nice finish. And you can see right there on the corner of my blade how it kind of peels up in chunks. And so this is one of the, the, the few areas and the few times I will say less is more. 
So if we were really going to take three or four passes, we wanted to take this area down a foot. I would probably do about a six inch, maybe even a four inch pass. And we're just going to start to shave that top layer of clay. And we're going to focus on making a nice, smooth, even pass. And those, again, notice the way I'm handling my blade. It's very nice, smooth inputs. And then if we want to go down to get to our true foot of cut, notice how few chunks are being taken out right there. That was a very nice pass. Now we're going to take another four to six inches. The key is to take small bites when you're dealing with clay. It's not like other soil types. You don't want to go crazy because that's when it starts to chunk out on you. You don't want it to chunk. You want to make nice, you, you want to shave clay. That's what I'm trying to get at. We want to shave clay. And you can see that within two passes, I was able to get that down roughly to a depth we wanted. We could do one more if we really want to go a true foot, although we're getting pretty close to it here. So this is three passes to get down to our depth. And you, and clay is going to want to pull your dozer down too. That's another reason you want to shave is because clay will grab onto your blade and it will yank you down. So you want to make nice, nice small shavings on clay. And you can see that even though it took us three passes to do that, look at the finish we've got. Compared to if I tried to go for that in one pass, we would have a chunked out disaster on our hands. So that's, you know, this is not going to be a super lengthy video. Obviously, there are a lot more advanced dozing techniques that we'll get into on future videos. But these are some of the things that really I see beginner operators doing when it comes to dozing in a production environment or when it comes to your finish grading. You know, having this hand just be a bump is one of the biggest things I've seen guys do. Is they've just got this hand all over the place, but it's super jerky, jerky motions. And it never leaves you with a nice, smooth finish grade. So getting smooth with this hand is key knowing how to operate the dozer where you're not abusing the dozer but you are getting full production is another key point so i hope this has been helpful obviously if you have any questions any comments drop them down below and i promise we'll get you some more advanced dozing videos out here in the near future you guys have a good one and we'll see you on the next one